Go big guy. Okay, hang on. Just a sec. Gotta be happy with that, haven't you? Yeah, that's good. That's good. Maybe that's too much personality, Mark? Maybe, Al, maybe. <laughs> I think we're on day six, is it? Five or six. Five or six, something like that anyway. We've lost count. Uh, right, so we've bantled the seat out. We've left our 10 mil. Reason we've left 10 mil is this is a 10 mil rebate cutter. So what we've got to do is, the rebate we've cut on the um, throne is 40 mil. These are 45. So we just need to put a five mil rebate round here. Hopefully it's gonna make the chair sit. And also we want that heavy, we want that heavy kind of timber at the front. So that's why we've done that. Um, it's easy enough, we'll run around with this, it's bearing guided so it's just going to kind of whip around the end and it's just going to put a little kind of 5 mil recess right the way around. What you haven't seen us do is, we want this seat when it goes in, we want it to line up nice and flush across the top. It'd be a real shame if we get it in and things are like this. So what we've done, we've cut a little rebate in there into, into each kind of end. So there, there, that side of that one as well. And there, now we have You just turned into a doddery old fool and just trailed off. Yeah, I know, well I was trying to find a bits of timber. <laughs> bits of timber are out there already, I think, aren't they? So we've made a little spline to sit in there and what that'll do is that will um, line up those when they go in. This is all at the back so you won't see like a nasty little spline at the front here. The front's just going to hopefully look like kind of continuous piece of timber. So I think what we'll do now is we will get on and we're going to cut that rebate. Let's make some sawdust. The skinny? Uh, no, it's just we, I left this tag on because I wanted to. It was very difficult to form it around that end. We also didn't really know where we wanted the seat to come to, so we're just going to whip that off, see if that fits a bit better. <laughs> working in joinery um, you know to try and get pieces of timber to fit exactly it's like if you've got the foreman on site you know pushing you to get the job done you can't have that level of fit unless you just it's pure luck you know to get pieces of timber to fit like that it takes time it takes offering it up nibbling a little bit away offering it up nibbling it away offering it up checking 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 offering up checking nibbling away that's the process to get things to fit absolutely yeah, bang I on. think you we captured that A little look on a scale of one to ten. Oh, we'll get it to fit, it's just going to now need some tweaking. And I'll bring a pencil back. We just need to lose the front edge there, that's all starting to look like it's working now. I'm just going to knock a tongue of that corner of Rama off. Freehand routing, here we come. Our Watson's freehand routing. Is the way it's done. Freehand routing stops right here. 
stops right there. So we initially took 10 mil here. I've freehand routed and we've taken about 15 now. How are you going to uh, secure it in place? Glued and clamped. So we're going to clamp the front edge and glue it. But we're also going to, before we get to that point, we're going to shape a scallop out for the butt. Problem. We can't slide this piece in, so our splines are now useless, which is a bit of a shame actually. Um, however, we do have a reference which is the top of this line, so I'm almost thinking what we're going to do is we're going to wedge underneath when we glue, um, little wedges around here to push these pieces right to the top of that line. What I'm going to do now though is I'm just going to do this little bit of shape into the front edge. Just mean that this sharp edge won't cut your, when you sat in it, it won't feel like it's cutting under your legs. We'll go and route that now. This is a half inch, um, a half inch round, so that's what we'll use on that front edge. Is there somewhere near? Safety equipment on. The idea was that we were going to scallop that chair out before we fitted it, but we've had to alter this line. So that means the line of where we were going to actually cut our rebate in this bottom has changed. So it's a good job we didn't really. Um, we're just struggling to clamp it now because I'd, I'd like everything lined up and then we're going to get to the shaping. Yeah, this is just bull****. Okay, let's get rid of those. We'll do it a different way. So we've just, we've just kind of roughly marked out like a nice border, like a two inch border, 50 mil border. It doesn't have to be exact because we're going to kind of feather all this in anyway. So what we're going to do is kind of probably steer a little bit away from that line and we're just going to scallop out the centre here. Not too much, you know, maybe five mil or so. I'm hoping that this is going to do it. Um, I thought about, you know, freehand routing round here to give us a nice line, but I think we'll be able to feather that in with a sander, besides which all of this needs sanding anyway. So let's see how we get on with this. We might swap tools in a minute and do it with something else. Um, right, let's go. We've done the rough shaping with our, um, this is a Lancelot, but I think these are like Arbortech, um, kind of a shaping uh, tool. Uh, what we're going to do is just clean up what we've made with a, a disc here, rubber, slightly flexible disc and a really coarse abrasive pad. So basically we're just going to try and remove as many of those machine marks as we can before we get to the orbital sanding.
rolling. Action. Action. Right. We've um, we fitted the uh, we fitted the seat in there. We put the uh, cut the aeroplane. Show the aeroplane, and then we can carry on. <laughs> right. Well, we've got our seat fitted. We've put on a clamp. Basically, this is, we're just doing a dry fit here, so we've put the uh, ratchet strap on to basically pull the whole kind of thrown around it. You know, we do have a line in the um, between these two boards here, but you know what? Look at this. There's lines everywhere. There's cracks everywhere. It, it fits, so I'm not too fussed about that. Um, this was a dry fit, so we're going to take it all to pieces again now. Um, there's just a slight little bit of sanding, which I've been saving myself because I enjoy sanding so much. So I'm just going to finish that off. And then at that point, really, we're going to, um, with the seat out, we're going to drill out in so many places to put the kind of big pins to hold the seat in place or to add more kind of stability. Um, what would you say? To shore up the seat. They're also decorative. They are decorative. You know, they're decorative as much as they are actually serving a purpose. They'll hold the seat in position. Um, the thing about putting steel through oak, oh, well, I don't know if I like that. The thing about putting a steel bolt into oak, is that better? Not this, though, none of this. So the thing, the thing about putting a steel bolt into oak is what happens is over time, the tannic acid um, in the oak will start to corrode the outside of that mild steel. And what will happen is um, not only then do you have the mechanical bond, almost like a nail being driven into timber, but you also have the chemical bond where the tannin is rotting the screw, uh, rotting the mild steel and causing it to flare up with rust. So it's a chemical and mechanical bond, um, which I think you should always try and strive for if you can. No. with that actually. <laughs>